Welcome back to the Pillarworks channel. When my wife and I got married five years ago, we agreed that any anniversary gifts would be gifts for the both of us or the house. But with five years being the wood anniversary, I knew I had to break the rule just this once. We got married at an old venue in Coconut Grove down in Miami, Florida, and right before our wedding date, they tore out the old Dade County pine flooring and replaced it with some new stuff. We happened to be there to check something else out, and I was able to snag a few of the boards. Five years later, I'm using a few of these pieces to make a little music box. A few years back, I cleaned up most of the boards, joining a face and ripping the tongues and grooves off the sides. So I started here with three of the boards, which are about two and a half inches wide and 13 or so inches long. The box is going to be very simple with finger joints in the corners and a top and bottom that sit in some grooves. Two of the boards will yield the four sides of the box, while the third will be resawn to give me the top and bottom pieces. The sides were milled down to 3 of an inch thick, which corresponds to the hinges I'll be using later. I also have a 3 8 inch dado stack set up along with the Anchor iBox jig you see here, and this will give me 3 8 inch square finger joints. And aesthetically speaking, I usually go for square finger joints if possible because I just think they look better than rectangular ones. And here you can see the sort of fit I was able to get. Not too snug, but it holds itself together without glue. And when possible, I like to rip the last partial fingers off the pieces. This is just a design choice, and I think it looks better to only have full fingers on the box. The next task was to route some grooves for the top and bottom pieces. I used a 3 inch spiral bit and my little Veritas router table. I set the fence so that the bit would only interfere with one of the fingers, and this meant that two of the pieces needed through grooves and the other two needed stopped grooves. I marked a line to know where to stop and start for the stopped cuts, which corresponded to a line I marked on the board. I could then cut my top and bottom panels to size, making sure to rip them to width, keeping the glue line directly in the middle. I wasn't able to find the mechanism I needed just by itself, it only came in a box, and that box ended up being a lot nicer than I was expecting. It pained me to tear it apart considering it's actually made of walnut, had an on off switch, and a nice piece of glass to protect the mechanism. Nonetheless, I tore it apart to get the mechanism out, and then used the bottom as a template for the placement of the holes. Next, I could do a little prep before the glue up. I did some sanding with my little three inch sander and this can really come in handy though it was still difficult to hold the pieces firmly. Then I finished the interior faces with a few coats of shellac, making sure to mask the surfaces that will receive glue. For the glue up, I made sure to apply glue to each of the fingers while also trying not to get too much near the inside faces of the box, which would hopefully mitigate any squeeze out. I dropped in the top and bottom panels, then popped in the last piece. I didn't show it here, but I did apply four clamps to get all of the joints closed tightly. The next step was to cut the lid from the base using the table saw. I always get some deviation from a perfect cut here, so sanding or planing is always required. In this case, I put some sandpaper down on MDF to sand the edges flat. Next, I could begin installing the hinges. I got these little guys from Horton Brasses, and they're really small, but still very high quality, and they're priced as such. Anyways, I marked my lines with a knife, then routed the bulk away with an eighth inch spiral bit. A little cleanup with the chisel, and I could then drill my holes for the screws. You'll see here that the lid doesn't close fully, which usually means the hinge mortises are too deep, and I thought that was the case as well, but it turned out a few of the screw heads were poking out and preventing the lid from closing. The last steps were to screw in the mechanism and the little knob, and then it was time to test it out.
That's about it for this one. I was able to finish this over the course of a day and really like how it turned out. I didn't have time to incorporate an on-off switch, but I think the simplicity of the box works well. My wife was pretty surprised and loved it. The song is Adele's Make You Feel My Love, which is the song we first danced to at the wedding. So that, combined with the old Dade County Pine from our wedding venue, makes this a very special project for me. Anyway, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in a few weeks with the next one. Thanks for watching.